Okay. So uh, due to the conflict with the City Council Finance Committee, the meeting Wednesday, September 8th has been changed to tonight, September 22nd at 6 p.m. This meeting will be held remotely over Zoom. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function submitted. Text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done by a roll call to ensure account and accuracy. As your name is called, please indicate that you are present. The following members, I, Larry Hassan, in attendance, Tony Gonzalez. Present. James Sweeney. Present. Samantha Ambrose. Present. Also in attendance, Director Rob May. Oops, present. Uh, Administrative Assistant Pamela Gurley. Present. And Deputy Chief Edward Williams. He's on mute. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you. Um, with that being said, I think I'll just move to the agenda tonight and I'm gonna read off. So we're, we're starting with the review and acceptance of the minutes from August 3rd, 2021 endorsement of a and plan, subdivision plans, and or lot releases, endorsement of plan for 21 Union Street, a &R applications, 109 Emmett Street and 109 East Ashland Street. I have in parentheses here, East Ashland Street, Emmett Street, map 162, plot six, 5R and 50. Map 002-001 Pleasant Street in parentheses, Benson, I don't see anything here for lot releases, uh, street acceptances for Sheridan Street. I'll move to uh, number one, permission to re return to ZBA property 49 Keswick Road. Uh, there was a ZBA denial of January 12, 21, applicant Dave Cruz and Curly and Hanson representing Agenda item two, preliminary subdivision property, 49 Keswick Road, two lots, representative applicant, David Cruz and Curly and Hanson. Agenda item three, site plan approval, property 787 Main Street, applicants, applicant Adelson Depina, in, in parentheses, John Spink, proposal, commercial edition. Agenda item four, site plan approval, Property address 340 Warren Avenue, applicant John Andrade, represented by JK Holmgren Engineering, proposal mixed use. Agenda item five, definite, definitive subdivision property, 50 Farrington Street, lot two, applicant Domingos Lopes, representative JK Holmgren Engineering. Uh, agenda item six, definitive subdivision property, Map 16, Route 188, part of Plot 97, Pleasant Street. Uh, that should be 15 lots now. Say that again, I'm sorry. That should be 15 lots now. I didn't. I don't see it. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm, okay, keep going. I'm gonna keep going. It says lots 18, but I did see in the notes that it has been reduced to 15, right, Pam? Correct. Okay. Uh, applicant CLM development. Representative W Engineering. I'm sorry, part of it was on the second page. Uh, agenda item seven, definitive subdivision plan, property map 11, route 56, plot 25, Rockland Drive, map 16, route 188, part of plot 97, Pleasant Street. I see it as lots number 17. Applicant Chilton Realty Trust, Representative Jacobs Driscoll Engineering. Um, the items listed are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. All items listed in this fact may also be brought up for discussion to the extent 
permitted by law. So with that being said, I think we get all the agenda items covered. Is there anything else I need to review at this point or shall we start with a review of the acceptance of the, meet, uh, the minutes? So oh, you're ready to go. Ready to go. So has everybody had a chance to review the minutes of August 3rd, 2021 meetings of the minutes of the meeting? Yes, I make a yes, motion yes, to yes. accept the minutes. Second. So we have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting from August 3rd, 2021. Moving on to endorsement of plan for 21. Mr. Chair? Yes. You need to call the vote for that. It'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? So <laughs> um, roll call. So for members um, voting um, on the, the meeting, uh, Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. And I'm Larry Hassan. Yes. Thank you, Pam. Keep me on track. Uh, so next we'll move to endorsement of plan for 21 Union Street. Okay, this is a subdivision that's just been hanging out there for a while. They neglected to bring us the plan to, to endorse and um, I would have brought it had we had a live meeting. Right. The plan is in the office so if you guys could stop up sometime next week and sign the plan. We okay. can get it back to them. All right. So do we need to vote on this too as well? No. And this is no. not up for a public hearing. It's not a public hearing item, correct? It is not. And it, it's the vote for this has already happened. Okay. And the 21 day appeal period has already passed. They just never brought the plan in to have it signed. So we need all the members of the board to come up to the office and sign off on it. When is a correct. good time? Um, anytime next week. Okay. Or I'll be there, you know, the rest of this week too. So if you want to come up tomorrow or Friday. I'm assuming that's good for all the other members. <clears throat> and we'll move to ANR applications, uh, 109 Emmett Street and 109 East Ashland Street. Again, East Ashland Street, Emmett Street, map 162, plot 6, 5R and 50. Do we have two on here, Pam? I see map zero two for Pleasant Street Bench, and those are two separates, right? That's a separate okay. ANR. Okay. Yes. Um, has everybody had a chance to review what we have online and some of the notes? I'm just looking at um, two existing dwellings on one lot. These dwellings were built prior to the subdivision controller and can be divided through ANR. Um, I looked at these briefly. I, me personally, I don't, I don't have any issue with it. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be addressed by the planning department about it, but I don't see any issue with based on what I've seen already. Um, the office has no issue. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the ANR for 109 Emmett, 109 East Ashton, et cetera. I will second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve and a second. So a vote. Um, I. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonsalves? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Samantha Ambrose? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Scott Ferrier has his hand up. Okay. Would you like him to be able to address you? We already voted on it. Sorry, Scott, it's over. I, I don't know if he has anything. Uh, I mean, do we should we hear what he has uh, to say or? Uh. Maybe he wants to speak on the next one. Okay. All right. I don't think this is his. Okay. This isn't his. Okay. So we can we can move. So we're all set on this item. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, map zero zero two zero zero one Pleasant Street, Benson. Um, let's see. Uh, the plan shows the division of the property into one conforming lot and non-buildable parcel. The non-buildable parcel is clearly marked with only 30 feet of frontage. This parcel will remain unbuildable. Um, we have concerns with what will happen to the parcel. Do us the plan is submitted. I, I'm going to ask- gonna wait, Make a motion to accept um, the plan that endorsed <coughs> as the plan has been submitted. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. 
Mr. Chair, okay. thank you. Okay, so then we'll take a vote. Um, yes, from Larry Hassan, Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have no lot releases. So I see Sheridan Street Street acceptance. I read the information on it and the notes, and I don't know if do we need a the uh, councilor to speak on. Is Councilor Thompson available, or do we need his comment on it? Do not see Councilor Thompson. I don't I hear that was you. part of his award, I believe. I think he submitted it, but. Right is a street acceptance totally in the purview of the city council. You are just required to hold this vote, but the actual public hearing for the acceptance is through the city council. Okay, so we can we can vote on this then. We don't need um, to recommend favorably or unfavorably. Okay. Um, I recommend favorable acceptance of Sheridan Street. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. We have a second. Uh, so the vote on it, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? Yes. So we have a motion to approve. Uh, okay, so we're gonna move on to our first agenda item. Uh, permission to return to ZBA is property 49 Keswick Road. It was ZBA denial in January 12th. We have the applicants Dave Cruz and Curly and Hanson. Uh, do we have the applicants online? I see, I see somebody, I think Bill Self. My Bill Self is here. Hi, Bill. How are I you, gentlemen and ladies? I don't see anybody else. Is there anybody else from this representing this team? I see somebody with their hand up. Let's see who that is, Craig. We'll move you to a panelist. Craig, if you would identify yourself when you get in the room. Craig, uh, are you a are you the applicant or an abutter? I I believe the um, woman he's with is the property owner. Okay, thank you. I, I think he's just trying to help her out. Okay, so Bill, if you want to make your presentation. Uh, yes, uh, Rob. Thank you. Uh, I just got a text from Dave Cruz. He's stuck in traffic. Dave is going to join me at the office. Absolutely. He'll be here shortly, but we can go ahead and go forward. Uh, you take, uh, we're representing, uh, I'm uh, Curly uh, in Hanson is representing Cruz Properties. They're looking to purchase the, the property at 49 Keswick Road. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a large lot that originally went into the into the board of appeals to create three lots and it was denied back in january of 21 so what we've done is we've applied and sent in a new revised plan uh just asking for the for the entire property to be divided into just two lots uh one lot would be where the house itself would sit and that would total 14,863 square feet and the second lot to the back, which would actually front on Marsden, uh, that, that total area would be 13,137 square feet. Uh, what we try to do is, is, is redo the configuration of a, of a plan that was originally submitted, uh, giving it, uh, meeting the, you know, the setbacks for, for front side and rear uh, on both of the lots other than a the uh, non-conforming uh, side on the existing house. And uh, what we'll be asking for with the Board of Appeals is for uh, variance on frontage area and uh, lot width uh, for the depth. And also it's a through lot you, in your regulations. It, uh, it uh, 
it would prevent from uh, this being uh, subdivided. So those would be the, the uh, items we'd be asking the Board of Appeals to rehear. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at notes from last time, Bill, that the ZBA didn't find any real hardships. And I'm concerned if we do approve and send this back, you may run up against the same thing again. I don't know. Is it because it doesn't really seem to be any real substantial changes or? Well, the, the changes, uh, uh, Larry, we, uh, we weren't representing the, uh, the, you know, the owner in the first case. Uh, we've picked it up through Cruise Properties. Okay. Uh, the woman who lives in the house, she's lived there for over 50 years. She's, un unfortunately, it's, it's, uh, we all get it to an, to an age where everything becomes very difficult to upkeep. And, and uh, she's, uh, she has to sell the property. And, and she's always had, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a large lot, almost, almost uh, uh, 28,000 uh, square feet. All the other lots in the area are you know, up to 8,000 to 10,000 tops. It's, it's much larger, both lots, than all the rest. Uh, it's really, uh, we know that financial hardships may not be a, uh, a, 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 the, the best in the world to ask for, but right. uh, this, this, is, this, this affords the op opportunity for her to be able to sell and be able to go someplace to, uh, to live in, uh, in, you know, and that's my, my honest uh, opinion of where the hardship would be. Uh, again, it's, it's been a large lot. It's, 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 it's been left, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, natural on one side up towards Marsden. Uh, and again, it, it, it wouldn't be, it certainly wouldn't be detrimental to the lot size for the neighborhood up there, you know, to all the abutting properties. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I do have a question, please, if sure. I may. Absolutely. Feel free, thank you. Yes, so when you say there was a substantial change, uh, can you explain that again? Because I, you know, I, I mean, I, let me have you explain it again, please. Is it possible to see it on the map, Bill? Can we get a look at it? I, I, I don't it. have it here. It, it is in the packet we sent okay. over. I don't know if Rob has the packet available. Let's see if I can. Uh, that would be helpful. I know I've seen this before. I'm just trying to get pull this up online myself. Yeah, it was in the packet. It's uh, a few pages into the packet, uh, uh, Rob. And and while I'm looking this up, if you wouldn't mind. Well, that's the that's that's the plan we're, we're submitting from Curly and Hanson. Okay. Uh, the original. I mean, the original lot had, you know, had the house cut off. Uh, and what they did was the, the depth between the two lots was 200 feet. So what the original plan had shown on Marsden, they had come back 100 feet to match pretty much the depths on all of the other lots of, of surrounding it. And what they had done on Marsden was they cut it right in half uh, with each, each lot having 70 feet of frontage. And, and, but they only had 7,000 square feet. Uh, so it was it was ending up being, you know, uh, lots that were much, you know, not much smaller, but were smaller than all the others. And I think the plan, I can't speak for the Board of Appeals because, again, I wasn't part of it. Right. Uh, I think it was just too small, maybe too much for asking. Uh, again, I, and I wasn't there for any representation. Uh, this plan going forward into the Board of Appeals will have will have, a, you know, the attorney that uh, representing uh, Mrs. McCrina. Who I believe is uh, is on the is on uh, right. the uh, the Zoom meeting, but it, it was a lot different. What we've what we've done is 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 basically created uh, the other plan didn't meet the rear yard setback for the for the existing house. It was only about 14, 15 feet where 30 is required. We try to we try to the, the the difference is is we've eliminated that and try to make such that. These both these lots, uh, except for the existing house, which is you know in a non-conforming status, uh, but the the proposed lot that we'd ask on the house on number two would meet all your standards as if it was just a regular lot. It, it's the it's the area uh, in the frontage and the again the lot width and 
the lot width, the requirement is 125 uh, for 100 feet depth. Uh, so those are the things that we, that we, 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 the changes basically went from a three lot subdivision down to just the two lot, one fronting on Marston Street and the second on Keswick. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a notation that I'm, I'm reviewing quickly too. Is it possible to center that home on the lot? Uh, if, where, if, where it's way over to the left. The one yeah, if the I lot. can just point out, uh, Rob. I'm looking at that back lot line too. Yeah. I'm sorry, Bill. It looks, it's really yeah, it's kind I'm, of a. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at my plan on my table. Rob, this is not the plan. This is not the plan submitted for, this is, this was a plan that we had submitted into the planning board under preliminary that we withdrew. Uh, the, the, if the first plan is the one we really want to look at. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find that for you. If, if you pull up the preliminary plan, that's going to show the plan he submitted to the board because they're the same plan. Right. That's the same one. That was a, that was another lot that was, uh, that was uh, originally proposed, but we withdrew that application because we re refigured it into a much, a much uh, more suitable uh, uh, configuration for both lots. It gave each, each, each lot a lot more rear yard, you know, use, uh, and, it, and it made it uh, much better. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just ask you again why the uh, CBA denied this? Sorry if this is redundant. Um, just reviewing my notes, uh, the original application in uh, January 12th was to divide the back portion lot into two additional lots. The ZBA found in their denial that the subject property is not unduly constrained by the city zoning ordinance. The sole purpose of granting a variance and there, therefore there would no hardship exist. Um, the applicants, let's see, get the board to take into account. This does not. This does not constitute a substantial change. Recommendation moved, you know, the ZBA wow. denied. Um, is, there a, is there another plan I, that yes. you're not seeing that? I downloaded a uh, different plan. Hang on. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's on the, the original packet plan that we submitted. Yeah, oh, it's all, all right. there. So it was, it's part of the preliminary plan, which is the next- I, I'm sorry, yeah, we, we submitted, we, we actually submitted two plans. One for a preliminary subdivision, okay. and a second plan was to get to return back because it hadn't been two years when uh, from the first denial, so it was recommended that we put in both the preliminary plan and uh, for that that the preliminary subdivision as well as uh, using that same plan to return to the to the uh, to the uh, board of appeals. It's so Matthew Costa with his hand up. That's it. That's it. Okay. That, that, that's the right one, Rob. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, in, in, I don't know if you can, if you have the packet, I mean, it, it uh, if there were still questions as far as the first one that was submitted, uh, it was also in the packet, Rob, if you you have the multiple pages available to call up. Uh, um, I would have to locate those, hang on. Well, I think, you know, if, if one you- One of the concerns though that the department has is that you had originally gone forward and you were going to take this one lot and let me, sorry, get the annotating tool out. Um, you were gonna take this one lot and divide it into three by basically slicing here and slicing here. And you've eliminated this proposed lot, but the house is still here. And the department's concern is that in the future, somebody may come back and try to slice one more time but if, and, and that was one of the reasons why the zoning board uh, rejected the application. So the thought was, is if the house, the new proposed house were in the middle of the lot, we would not have the, uh, a future owner would not have the ability to, to divide this even further. 
Yeah, and we we looked at the options, Rob. I understand what what uh, what you're saying. Uh, what we try to do this the, the configuration of the new lot on the second the new house location on the second lot, it provides two things. It gives it a little bit more privacy to both houses. It's uh, I mean I I can't imagine if they didn't if you know I can't imagine that they would try to now or somebody would try to come in and try to resubdivide the second lot of 13,000 into two lots. It, uh, it, I'm sure, I don't think anyone on, on the boards would entertain that. What, what this does is that, again, it gives both lots maximum use, especially to the rear yard on number 49, where it meets the setback where the original plan called for just 15 feet off the original house. And it really cut down the use of that backyard. If you if out in the field, if you were to, in the real house there, you would see that that's the yard being used and really not the side yard as you're looking at the plan on the left of number 49. It's just an open area with a few trees on it. And again, but uh, also on the proposal here, we, we construct a chain, uh, a stockade fence on the rear line. And again, that would add to the privacy of the two properties. Uh, and the house that was proposed here also conforms to all of your setbacks in the zone, in the R1C zone. We just thought it, would, it, it gives the maximum use for both lots and the privacy. Uh, miss, Mr. May? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. So <clears throat> since there's not a substantial change going from three lots to two lots, would there be substantial change if they agreed to centering that house on the second lot? Would that be a substantial change? You, you I don't want to, uh, uh, we need to avoid sending stuff back to zoning that doesn't constitute going back. So yeah. would that be a substantial change? You have, may have seen a letter in your um, packet uh, from uh, Philip Nazarella, who at the time was the city solicitor who um, specifically brought up a case like this where the property um, uh, dropped a house from a subdivision um, just like this, going from a three-lot subdivision to a two-lot subdivision. And his comment then as city solicitor was that was not a substantial substantive change. Um, it, it's really up to the, the board um, whether that is a substantial change. The other um, issue that you have is the, the zoning board found that there was no hardship, so that there was nothing about the property's shape, its topography, its um, soil conditions that warranted a, uh, a variance from the ordinance. Uh, so that's your first hurdle, I think, is, um, has the plan changed anything to address those issues? Um, has there been a change or, or, or were, there, were there changes that, that show that uh, the soil conditions, topography or shape of the lot have changed? Um, I don't see it here, um, but that's, that's up for you to decide. Um, and then once you get past that, um, you know, whether it deserves a, a variance, then is, is going from three lots to two lots a substantial change. And uh, according to the legal opinion uh, from the former city solicitor, uh, it is not a substantial change. Right, so that half answered my question. So going from three to two is not, but if they change the location of that second house, does that... It's still not a substantial change, but if the board wanted to fuck it up, as it were, um, that would make it a little bit more palatable. But it's still not a substantial change. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions from the members of the board, but is there anybody in the public in favor or opposed that we would like to speak on the matter. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see. Who there is, is a Mr. Matthew Chen Costa. I don't know. I moved him to panelists because he had his hand up. 
Yeah, so uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Matthew Costa. Can you okay. hear me? So I, I'm the attorney that represented the owner at the, at the original uh, hearing with the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so um, I am familiar with the questions and concerns that the Zoning Board had at that hearing. And I would represent to the Planning Board that you know the, the primary uh, issue that we focused on at the hearing before the Zoning Board were the size of the lots. And at the time, the plan that was presented it required a, a, a rear yard um, a setback variance from the existing dwelling to the, to the rear lot line. And so uh, at, at least as to the comments from the board members when we presented the uh, application, that was really what the focus was. And so, um, you know, I, I don't wanna restate what's, what ha has already been said by Mr. Self, but I would respectfully submit that this is a very different plan from the plan that was presented uh, the, the first time with the zoning board. So uh, when we went before the zoning board, we had a plan that was creating three lots. And we were asking for two 7,000 square foot lots on Marsden Street. So those lots had half of the frontage uh, that the lot um, that uh, is being created according to this plan has, um, had half of the, the area and uh, there were variances requested from the existing dwelling. And so, um, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm not familiar with this legal opinion that's been referenced by the city solicitor, but I do know that the issue, you know, when the planning board considers a, a, a return to the zoning board of appeals, uh, the issue is that you can't bring the same plan back to the zoning board within two years because that was the subject of a denial. After the two years, you can take the same plan back to the zoning board and ask for the same variances. If you wanna come back within the, within the two years, the plan just has, it has to be substantially different from the one that was denied. And uh, I'm not familiar with the different subdivision uh, you know, that was referenced or you know, the, the specifics of that, but I would respectfully submit that it is a determination that's for the planning board based on you know, the specific plan that you have in front of you. And, uh, uh, and I don't think that anyone could, could doubt that a plan that creates, you know, three lots out of a 28,000 square foot parcel is totally different from a plan that creates two lots, like the one that you have in front of you. I mean, the, the plan that we're showing you has twice as much frontage, like I said, twice as much area. And I don't think that there's uh, 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 any, um, realistic uh, interest in returning to create a third lot like that. That was one of the concerns that was raised about the, the placement of the proposed dwelling. That was already denied by the zoning board. Uh, so there's no realistic, uh, it, that would be the, uh, require another public hearing. And I, I think that that's not proposed at all. So um, I just hope that the planning board, you know, will review this plan. I can share the prior plan. I have it if the, if the board would allow me to, to, to share the screen, I could show you the prior plan and you'll see that it's just an altogether different plan. So uh, what my client, Mrs. Macrina, is just respectfully requesting for is that determination from the planning board that this is, it, it's a different plan. And then the merits of the zoning petition itself, that's up to the zoning board of appeals. So we'll present our case back to the zoning board and I know they had a written decision, but I am also familiar with the with the actual comments they made at the hearing, and so we're optimistic that when we present this new plan that shows you know different dimensions, uh, presents different issues, and it creates much larger lots that are larger than you know pretty much all the lots in the area. My client's been there in this neighborhood since before most of those houses were built, or around the time you know, construction was ongoing in this neighborhood. She, she originally bought her property in 1957, I believe. And so uh, she's a lifelong resident of this neighborhood. When she, um, you know, purchased, purchased this, you know, back in 1957, she probably could have done this as of right. Uh, but, you know, after uh, having this property for, for as many years, and now that it's 2021, the zoning is such that, you know, approvals are needed. And so we are optimistic that when we go to the zoning board, they will take a different view of this. It is a different plan. And so we're just respectfully requesting that the planning board 
um, give us that opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Uh, Mr. May, are, are we able to make a, if we were to consider approving this, are we able to, to make a condition that the deed is written where the second lot cannot be um, divided? Is written into the deed? Uh, yes, you can. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do have a comment in the Q&A okay. uh, from a Michelle Henson. Uh, asking, uh, stating that uh, is, uh, is there a reason not to grant the request? If not, I'm for helping a senior citizen and granting the request. I do not know if she is in a butter. I would assume that she is. I'm, uh, I did ask her in chat and I'm waiting for her response. Uh, I also have a hand up from uh, Jamal. Um, I'm going to allow you to lower your hand, uh, ba -ba -ba. allow to talk. Oops, you disappeared, where'd you go? Jamal, you may address the board. Hi, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you, thank you. Okay, yes, i just like to make a statement. First of all, my name is Jamal Brathwaite. I'm a resident in Brockton, and I'd like to make a statement in uh, in positive approval in support of this applicant. I think that William himself made a very clear statement of hardship, why this would be needed. And secondly, the fact that the lot would be uh, divided, this could potentially create additional housing in the city of Brockton, therefore giving even more relief to a potential home buyer in the future. So it, overall, I think there is a legitimate case of relief. And so I support 100% the planning approval approved this applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. May, is the commenter in a butter? Um, I have not gotten a uh, response from her. Um, or the, the last commentator? Michelle? The last commentator is not in a butter. No, it's not. Just a citizen of Brockton. Hi. All right, can we move on? Are there any other questions, Mr. Chair, from the community? Yeah, any, any more for or opposed to this? I do not see any more hands raised. Um, does somebody want to make a motion with some conditions on this one? It seems like um, what we I'd make a motion to accept, to allow to return to zoning board with the condition that lot two, the deed is written that they cannot be Divide it again. Can I can I make a can I ask a question before sure. we start that process? Absolutely. Um, on the on the plan there, um, just maybe some explanation as to why the new uh, dwelling is all the way to the left. Yeah, if I Bill Self, if I could answer that one, uh, Jim. Uh, again, what we what we really try to do, if you if you can imagine. First of all, the type of houses that we have proposed is a, what they call an A-frame colonial, two floors. Uh, it's, it's, it's standard. It, it, gives us, it gives us two things. It gives us uh, an area to put a, a, a house square footage big enough uh, with, in meeting all of the criteria in your zone. We're not asking for any relief from the Board of, Board of Appeals. If I, when I read the original determination, uh, I think there was a, a strong weight on the fact that the original plan only showed the existing house having 15 feet of rear yard. Now, and the reason that we redid the plan the way we did was to afford that privacy, privacy for the, which would be new owners uh, for number 49, as well as the privacy any other lot in the city would have legally uh, with the lot that was on Marsden. It also gives ample area uh, on the old house in the rear yard, that is that's what it is occupied now. It's got you see got beautiful gardens in there. Uh, we've 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 saved almost all of that area of natural grass to be left as natural grass, which improves the value and the look of the house. And as well as up on the uh, on the new lot, you can see what a nice young family moving in. You know, there's a nice side yard to be able to you know pay you know put kids out and you know we'll play you know with uh, you know, swings or whatever. We just, it gave the privacy uh, that we thought was best for the lot and for both of the lots. That was really the main, our main focus on it. 
if we went to uh, an instance of putting something in the middle, uh, we'd almost be forced to, you only have about maybe 22 feet of width. Uh, we'd have to come into the front yard on Marsden and ask for variance or the standard colonial. Uh, and then you, you, know, you wouldn't have any room for decks or anything else either. But you, we'd also have to we'd go in asking for rear yard setback. So we're going from building a house proposed that meet all the setbacks <clears throat> to one we'd need, we'd need setbacks from both front and rear yard. Uh, that's what we are trying to avoid. And again, I, we feel it's a, a much more private setup for both both lots. That was a, our main Thank you. Intention. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board or mm -hmm. at this point, any other to oppose or for or against? If not, well, let's move to a motion. And a vote. We have a motion on the table. Thank you, Pam. Um, to return it to the ZBA with a deed restriction that there was to be no further subdivision of the property. You need a second. Or not. Planning board members, do we need a second? I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion to move, so a vote. Um, vote to approve with the conditions, um, I'm paraphrasing now, that it will not be further subdivided. Um, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? I'm on mute, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, yes, thank you. Okay. So motion to approve with the condition. So with that being said, we're moving on to the preliminary subdivision plan of 49 Keswick Road, lot two. And we're, again, we're with um, Bill Self. And is Dave Cruz in yet too? Or? Uh, yes, Dave uh, did walk into my office. Good, All right. Good. okay. I am ready. Okay. Um, this is pretty oh. much exactly the same. Yes. Exactly the same. Plan. Just take your vote. You can just vote. Yes. So motion to approve. Tony Gonzalez, yes. I'll second the motion. Vote uh, Vote from the members, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, members. Thank you. We thank the board. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item, site plan approval, property 787 Main Street, applicant Adelson the Painter and John Spink, proposal, commercial addition. Uh, do we have the applicant or a representative? Could you raise your hand if you're here for that? Anybody else? Okay. Do you have anybody in? No? Um, uh, Scott Rubin. Okay. Should be. There he is. Hey. See Scott, and it looks like, is I'm, I'm assuming that's Mr. DePina. Yep. Okay. Yes, it is. Craig, in this meeting hall? No. He should be. Uh, uh, huh? No, John. I'm trying to remove Craig. Oh. Go ahead with your presentation, sir. Uh, is Pam, can you tell if John is John on John Spink on uh, in queue? I don't see him as logged on unless he's logged on under some very odd name. <laughs> um, okay. Well, John um, was. John was supposed to join us. Uh, he's the one that did the uh, did the plan. Right. I'm going to um, move Councilor Nicastro because I believe this is her ward. Okay. okay. Is there anybody else associated with this case? Nobody else has their hand up over there. So. Okay. Okay. Well, we were before tech review on July 26. There was a had been, uh, Mr. DePina had been before tech review quite a few times and um, we had wound up with a series of 
at the last tech review meeting, a series of requests and um, answers to a lengthy narrative that I believe is on file with the board. Um, Mr. Spink had provided uh, this narrative dated July 1st. I believe it resolved most of the issues when we went before tech review. There were a few items that needed to be addressed, which um, Mr. DePina had no issue with and believe that um, John had filed a plan that is updated. I think the plan dated uh, revised, last revised August 5th, 2021, addresses the few items that needed to be um, needed to be dealt with. I don't know if um, you wanted to post this, the uh, the um, the plan. It might be easier for me to go over it that way. But there really were just a few a few things. There was an addition of some landscaped areas along the residential border on one portion of the property. Uh, dumpster area was moved and, and provided for a protection area with fencing. And um, <clears throat> we moved a handicapped space, flipped the handi handicapped space from a little bit away from the, there we go. All right. Um, we had moved the handicap space that's on the corner of Maine and Tribu. Uh, we flipped it to more into the corner than uh, away so that it wasn't impacted by the, um, by the single entry and single exit area. Um, yeah, along that side, we improved the landscaping along the border of Tribu Street. So we've got uh, that corner. Now we moved to one parking space. So Mr. DePina was willing to I uh, give up, I think it was a 15, 15 spaces before, now it's 14. And again, the dumpster area has now can, will be constructed with an enclosure. There'll be some six foot, uh, I think it's six foot fencing that there was a sample along that border there, along with the six foot uh, fencing along the uh, residential, exactly. So uh, good work with the pointer there. Who's ever managing that? So thank you, Mr. May. Hey, thank you. Uh, working along that line there, so we have uh, opaque white fencing that will uh, shield the um, the project from those two. I think the residential neighbors on either side. So uh, with that, I think it it complies. I think they added the infiltration area that was uh, requested as well. Sort of working off my notes from from our last meeting, um, and. Again, we'll be going to the Board of Health for a, a waiver for that 10 foot uh, buffer on the on the dumpster. That's really the only place on this site that it can it really can be located uh, safely anyway with the proper enclosure to keep it protected from the public as uh, we had discussed at the at tech review. So uh, with that, I would ask that the board approve this site plan and um, I think Mr. DePiner is ready and prepared to uh, you know, make this uh, site substantially improved from where it is after the fire that occurred at this property and uh, get this back to being a productive uh, project here with uh, some new employees and a refresher for this corner that needs it. Okay. Um, I see that Consul and the Castro is on here. So would she like to speak on this first before board members or? Yes, I would. Thank you. Good evening, Planning Board. Uh, my name is Susan McCaster. I represent Ward 4 in the city. Um, this property is located at the corner of Maine and Tribu, and as such is, is in Ward 4. I'm speaking in favor of this, and let me very briefly tell you why. I've known Mr. DePina for several years now. He was formerly a partner with someone who was, a, was supposed to be a friend. In, uh, in the operation of an auto repair business at this location. And the friend operated it very poorly, um, violated all of the license provisions and, and um, other things. And Mr. DePina was forced to buy him out, um, assume full ownership of the property. Then he had a fire. He's worked with me. He's worked very hard to get to tonight's uh, point of approval. He worked with me uh, very willingly on the license and the license stipulations that I brought in front of the city council several months ago. He has an auto repair, I think mechanical and body licenses and a garage license. I support this. He's a fine young man. I think he's a good businessman and will 
be a credit to the neighborhood. I'm looking forward to it being cleaned up. It, it, it looks so much better than it did a year ago. Um, neighbors are looking forward to it. Another business owner has expressed how, how glad he is that Mr. DePina is taking over. And this is the last piece in getting this business reopened and, and that corner looking better. And so I support this. Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board members, any comments? Mr. Chairman, could I make a comment? Oh, sure. Yes, please. Um, and this is probably more directed towards uh, um, the licensee. Uh, he currently has a motor vehicle repair license that was approved by the city council. And the drawing with parking spaces submitted to that had 16 spaces. So I would suggest he get in touch with Council the Castro and just modify that license so that everything is equal and there's no differences in between. Good point. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That acceptable, Scott and Adelson? Yeah, we can't really uh, we can't really change that since we pretty much needed to make some modifications and improvements um, to the site with the landscape buffer. So we stuck with pretty much 14 spaces. So we're okay with that. Um, board members, any comments, questions? Yes, Mr. Chair, just a, just a brief uh, question. Uh, good evening, sir. So I see here in the notes that it talks about uh, green spaces that are gonna be provided here. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the green spaces are shown um, on the plan uh, on the borders of Tribu along the parking line, along that, along that border, this is all new and is sort of what we would call a landscape strip. There'll be some uh, general mulch bed and shrubbery in that area. And that's the, that's shown as, but those cir those circular plants are, are all, that's a landscape bed. And then on the, tr on the main street side, there's also um, the same type of thing, sort of a mulched area with, with shrubs. So that's, that's the green space that's re required. I believe it meets all the criteria. Thank you, sir. Any other board members? Um, do we have anybody else from the public opposed or for? That would like to be heard. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any hands up. Okay, so then I'll I do want to remo uh, remind attendees that if you Hover towards the bottom of your screen, you'll see a raised hand icon that looks like a hand <laughs> up. If you have any questions or comments on a particular case, if you could push that icon, uh, we will then um, be able to turn on your microphone so you can address the board. And I still see no one. Okay. Uh, just a note here, Pam, where, uh, if Move, if we move to approve this site with standard conditions, is there anything else that needs to be uh, read into this or are we is it pretty much understood I, what their plan is? Uh, unless you want to put in the, the that they still need a board of health waiver, but there's a, a um, there's wording in the apple in the approval that says they're still required to get all the licenses okay. and oh, approvals. I don't think that are necessary that. for his business. I don't think we needed that. So I, I guess no. I'm looking for a motion from motion members. to approve with stipulations from Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, so we're gonna roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. James Sweeney, yes. Samantha Ambrose, yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Council Castro. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, thank you there's a red stamp plan that we're going to have to get to you. Um, okay. That is the only plan he can use to get a building permit on. So if he goes to try to apply for a building permit now, he needs okay. to wait. Wait, you'll just let us know when the plan is available? I can send a PDF to you and I can send a PDF to him because I don't know who the contractor is. So. And that'll, that'll have the red stamp on it? It will. That's fine. We can Sometime print that. Sometime next week. Okay, great. 
Thank you. Appreciate that. Good to see good business in the city. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item four, site plan approval, property 340 Warren Avenue, applicant John Andrade, representative J.K. Holmgren, proposal is mixed use. And I'm assuming we have them on. I moved Scott. Scott. I saw John. Oh, there's John. I got him. I see Scott. <gasps> Scott, you're on camera and everything. I'm ready. Ah. There comes John. Is there anybody else on the team? I hope not. Uh, those billable hours add up, so. Um, hit it, sir. Okay, ready for you, Scott. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, board members. Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, representing John Andrade uh, for a site plan approval of a project at 340 Warren Ave. Uh, it's an existing kind of a large building right at the corner of Warren Ave and Father Kenny Way, uh, just down the road uh, from the parking lot at the courthouse. Uh, John has done a lot of work out rehabbing the existing building that's uh, that's been sitting there. He's redone the windows, uh, kind of refaced the whole building, uh, has done a lot of work on the exterior and the interior. We're here tonight uh, for site plan approval to turn the second floor into four residential apartments. We've been to the Board of Appeals, we're granted a variance uh, for this mixed use. Uh, in the site plan we have before you, we're making considerable uh, improvements to the property. We are required to have 50 parking spaces. We are gonna propose 56 spaces. Uh, right now, the existing property essentially has no green space and definitely has no drainage. And uh, we're adding both. We're adding a substantial drainage system to the rear of the building under the parking lot that'll handle the roof runoff and a good portion of the parking lot to make sure that the water does not go uh, uncontrolled out to Warren Ave or out to Cottage Street. So that's a, a major improvement for the, for the neighborhood. And the second thing we're doing is adding a considerable amount of green space to the property. Right now, it's pretty much just parking lot and weeds around the perimeter. So we're uh, greening that up and, and kind of beautifying the, the neighborhood. Uh, so we did go to tech review back at the end of June. Uh, and we made the changes to the plan that you see before you uh, that would discuss the major changes that we had. Uh, the first thing that came up was a change to the parking layout right in front of the building. Uh, as you stand on Warren Ave, the, the left-hand entrance, that face of the building, we had the handicapped spaces closer to Warren Ave. And it was suggested that we move those around uh, to make them closer to the doorway. So we uh, flipped the delivery space with the handicap spaces, made that change. Uh, the other really significant change we made uh, both at ZBA and at Tech Review, uh, there was discussion about the fire truck exit out onto Cottage Street. Cottage Street is a one-way street. Uh, and we were asked if we could widen the entrance that we had and also if we could kind of angle it just to give the fire trucks uh, kind of a head start making that turn on Wattage Street where it's a one-way traffic. We didn't, uh, we originally had it proposed as a 90 degree intersection like we would typically do. Uh, and it was suggested by, by Chief Williams that we kind of angle it a little bit just to help those trucks get out onto Wattage Street. So we made that change as well. Uh, in doing that, we lost one parking space, but we have, like I said, we have six extra. We increased the green area a little bit and made it a little bit better for the uh, for the fire department. And uh, those are really the the changes that we've made as a result of tech review, Mr. Chairman. And I think we've, uh, as I said, I think John's got a good plan in front of him and has already done a good job on the building and certainly improving the look of it. And uh, these site changes will certainly make the will be a big benefit to the neighborhood. Okay, and, and I'm just following up on some um, notes too about the area closer to property number 362 and accessible from Warren Avenue should not be used for parking. Yes. It'll be clearly marked for deliveries only. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's exactly. Mr. May's flagging that up right there. There's a little kind of an alcove between the two buildings. But we'll we'll certainly note that on the on the uh, on the red stamp plans. Okay. Um, 
I don't have any further questions. Uh, any thoughts or questions from the planning board members? I don't have much to add. It looks like a clean plan. I think this has been through a few times. I know I've seen it at Tech Review at least once or twice. It has been. Anybody else? Uh, do we have anybody in, it's a, being a public hearing, do we have anybody opposed or in favor that would like to be heard? Oh, I'm sorry, I have to stop sharing so I can see that. Okay. I have one person, um, Jamal, I'm gonna allow to speak. Um, Jamal, if you can identify yourself. Hello, can everyone hear me? Can hear you, yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yes, my name is Jamal Brackley and I'm a Brockton resident. I wanna give, give a positive statement of support for this applicant. Um, I'm asking for the planning board to approve this applicant site plan so this building can become a, a productive asset that will attract people to Brockton uh, and be a resource for people here, as well as be a higher valued, valuable taxable asset to the city. So hence I'm asking, and I've seen the property, it looks beautiful by the way, well done. It's one of the most beautiful buildings in all of Brockton and the work inside is just superb. So I can't wait to see the final product. Thank you. Thank you, Jamal. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, not to be a nitpicker, Scott, but could you just change the uh, spelling of Father Kenny Way? Yeah, I know, I was gonna say something. Thank you, Ed, I didn't wanna be there. All right. You didn't wanna be that guy. I get called on it all the time in my contracts at work. You know, the name is spelled wrong. You got an S instead of a Z. So, okay. I know we, I know we mentioned it last time. So I just wanted to, for, for longevity. I think you did. We'll make sure that's changed, Chief. Um, Mr. Chairman, Thank we have you. another person who would like to address the board. Please do. Um, Ailey. He can speak. Is PAC Global. Um, could you please identify yourself? Um, before you speak, because we need uh, to have this on public record. And so I need a real name and um, for the record. So please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Jamal Gooding. I um, am speaking on behalf of this, <clears throat> excuse me, before you. I am a Brockton resident, and I just wanted to say I fully support this project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I, I actually had one question, please. Sure. Um, uh, good evening, sir. So you talked about that green space and that's very big with me. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about what your plans are to turn this space green or what we're gonna be looking at? Sure, uh, well, we have a lot of perimeter plantings, uh, which currently there are none. So we have a, a bunch as Rob showing between our property and the courthouse parking lot. As you've probably noticed right now, really the only thing that separates our pavement from the courthouse is just a chain link fence. There's really nothing else. Uh, so we're gonna kind of break up that sea of, of asphalt. And then in addition to that, we have a green island uh, right there that breaks up uh, some of the parking up against Cottage Street, another landscaped area at the, uh, at the exit of Cottage Street. Perfect. So, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. I think that's about all you can fit in there anyways, but it, it looks pretty good to me too. It's better than what they've got now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else in the public opposed or in favor of? If not, we'll move to a motion. Uh, I have another person who would like to speak. Okay. Um, that is Michelle Henson. I am going to allow her to speak now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Michelle Henson. I'm a resident of Brockton and I am also speaking um, in support of, of this proposition. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Michelle. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, there's no carrying over stipulations of any kind, are there? Not that I'm aware of. I um, maybe um, Pam would know that instead of I, but I don't believe so. 
carrying over stipulations? I don't understand. Well, there's no, no one mentioned any stipulations on this, have they? Other than oh. the area to be clearly marked for deliveries. Right. Okay. No, yeah, no conditions. So it would be standard conditions with that specific special condition. Yes. Right. So do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, so we'll have a vote with, um, I'm, I'm going to state that um, the delivery area will be marked for delivery area. And I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be read into along with standard conditions. Um, that covers it. Um, so vote Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda right five. We're moving along. We're getting there. 50 Farrington Street, uh, lots, two lots, applicant Domingos Lopes, the representative is J.K. Holmgren. I'm assuming that's you, Scott. Yes, sir. Okay. Scott, do you uh, have anybody else with you? Uh, Domingos I Lopes, no? No, I don't think so, Pam. Okay. No, I don't believe so. Uh, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Scott Ferry, Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Domingo Lopes on this project on Farrington. Uh, it's a subdivision technically of uh, a larger piece of property on Farrington Street. We were before you folks uh, way back in the springtime, I believe, uh, submitting a preliminary plan which allowed us to go to the ZBA uh, to allow for this uh, division that you see in front of you. Uh, the property is owned R2, so uh, two family dwellings are allowed. ZBA granted the variance uh, to allow a two family dwelling on lot B. So now the next step in that approval is, is coming to you folks uh, for the official definitive subdivision. Uh, as part of that submission, we do have some comments uh, from the city engineer uh, that he would like addressed. Uh, you know, there's, there's probably six or seven things that he would like addressed. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if we should go over every one, Mr. Chairman, or if it'd just be, I suppose it would just be easier and probably uh, better for everybody if we just answer any questions you folks would have and then let me make the changes, get back to the city engineer and hopefully get his blessing for the next meeting. So, so um, I, I guess, you know, what the city engineer is requesting your and your applicant, the applicant is okay with doing, correct? Yeah, it, it's really just details on the plan, Mr. Chairman. Nothing significant, to be honest with you. You're not going to, the house is staying where it is, the driveways, the little parking area on lot A. Everything is going to stay where it is. It's just details on the plan, uh, you know, that he would like to see. So, uh, you know, we can argue back and forth whether or not we need them or don't need them or should need them or shouldn't need them. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think in fairness, it puts you guys at a, in a tough spot if we push it to go forward when you have a kind of an outstanding letter there. Puts us in a bad spot. I'd rather address his comments and get a, a clean letter for the next meeting, Mr. Jamin. Okay. Um, I agree with that, and thank you, Scott. Sure. Do we have any other thoughts or questions from the members? I'm, I'm good with it. Samantha's with it. Uh, this is a public hearing, so do we have anybody that would like to speak in favor or opposed? Well, I, we're continuing this, correct? Oh, we're gonna, oh, we are gonna continue. Right. Gonna continue, Scott? Yes, please. And we don't need to have a public hearing, I'm sorry. I, okay. So, Pam, help me with this. If we're gonna continue, this is gonna, how, how are we gonna state well, this? Well, Scott, um, I'm assuming you want to continue to the November meeting, because it's too late to get on our October meeting, which is now right. two weeks right from around now. the corner. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if that is the case, I'm going to ask you to sign the waiver because this was a preliminary and yep. the planning board's turnaround to make a decision is shorter. I'll get you that waiver and the continuance request as well tomorrow, Pam. 
So okay. then the planning board members just need to make a motion to continue, correct? To a date certain so that they don't need to re-notify a butters or rerun the legal ad. So what is our date in November? November? I think it's the day after the election. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we going to? Will it be November 10th this year? Be the third if it's after election. Oh, wait a second. Sorry. Yep. I'm looking at my. Okay. It's November. You're you're a Wednesday that. Right. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So we need a motion on that, planning board members. Make a motion to continue this to November 3rd meeting. Second. Okay. So uh, roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Jane Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? Yes. Thank you. Hey, thank you, folks. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, moving on oh, to... Start. We all set? Okay. Yep. Agenda oh, item six. Definitive subdivision plan, property map 16, Route 188, part of plot 97, Pleasant Street. Uh, uh, number 15, applicant CLM development, representative W engineering. We all here, it looks like I'm seeing a few here, so and I believe attorney uh, Burke too. We have moved attorney Burke, I moved um, Evan, I moved Charlie, and as far as I know, that is it, but this one um, presented. I don't know about a butters. Okay. Worry about the butters when they start raising their hands. Uh, after the presentation is over. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Attorney Burke. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board. Uh, I have the pleasure of representing Charlie Macy, and uh, this is a somewhat mature project that's been before the board uh, on a few instances. Uh, it has undergone some revisions. Uh, uh, Evan is going to be uh, uh, speaking about uh, where we are exactly, but as an overview, we have modified the plan before you. So now it's a 15 lot subdivision that meets all of the uh, frontage, uh, uh, total uh, land area uh, and uh, uh, the zoning requirements for the uh, uh, city of Brockton. Uh, there are uh, essentially two waivers before the board. Uh, the first waiver uh, relates to the issue of the length of the roadway. Uh, we have tried to address that uh, in, in a couple of ways. Uh, first, we have, uh, and, and, and uh, Evan will be more, in more detail, worked with the abutting subdivision that I also happen to represent uh, to create uh, an emergency access uh, that would allow for a water looping uh, to improve uh, the flow in that particular area and uh, an emergency access. Also, we have uh, sought to discuss this project uh, with the uh, police department uh, and with the fire department. And I'm very pleased to say that we have uh, for tonight's hearing for the planning board's consideration, two letters of support from both the police department and the fire department, basically indicating that they have no public safety issue concerns for the length of the roadway. So I'm gonna let uh, uh, Evan go ahead and, and follow up. Uh, and it is our sincere hope uh, that at the end of the meeting that uh, the planning board will put this to a vote and approve the uh, uh, traditional subdivision that it is. Evan. Thank you, Attorney Burke. Uh, for the record, it's Evan Watson with W Engineering representing the applicant. Um, if I could have permission to share my screen, let's see, I'll go to. Uh... Uh, so just so we remind ourselves where we are, this is the, the area in question. It's south of Pleasant Street, east of Route 24. Um, if we rotate this it'll be in the direction of our plan um, you can see we've modified to 15 lots um, and it's essentially an extension of Westbury Road and then it uh, has one other road with two turnarounds Leody Lane um, as attorney Burke mentioned we have a 
easement that goes across here for extending the water line in an access road. We also have a detention basin on this side um, that's going to handle all the storm water from our um, pro project. And it also has an access easement that comes through here that could um, potentially be used as well for, for accessing this property in the future. Um, the previous submittals showed a detention basin in this area, but um, through the engineering review, it was determined that it would be better to take um, the existing drainage from this property into this small detention basin and actually tie it into this one. So since you've seen uh, the last set of plans, this basin was eliminated and this one got slightly larger. Um, Let's step into the plans here. And you can see right here, this is where we show that easement. Um, we have the easement for the, the sewer line. Evan? Yes, sir. Oh, and reshare. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, I, I switched windows. Thank you, Rob. Okay, very good. Um, so this is shown on the definitive plans. These easements are highlighted so they can easily be shown. And one of the reasons why we chose the area of this easement here is is actually to exist as existing stone wall right here. So it seemed like a great logical place. It's in between the stone wall and the property line. Uh, we'll put a little paved apron at the end and then we can get right through. Um, as Attorney Burke also mentioned we've reduced to 15 lots and that's so we have full compliance with all the zoning regulations for frontage and area. Um, I believe my last letter to you dated 830 um, was basically stating that we had three outstanding items with the review of beta group. We we're asking that those uh, be a condition of approval. Well, since the meeting ended up getting delayed for a few weeks, we were able to make all the changes that they requested. Um, so we've submitted a new set of plans. Um, and I can definitively say that by changing, by complying with any of their changes, we did not change the design at all. Um, they asked for a little bit of extra notes to help the contractor um, construct the, the design properly, um, add a detail, and do a test pit. Um, so we did all those. Uh, beta is in review of all of our information. And we're expecting a uh, positive outcome from them. And you can see the test pit was done right here. Um, so we can construct this basin as we show here. Um, I th think that's, oh, let's see. The only other thing that we added uh, that wasn't on the list, uh, we added a gravel access road detail and we coordinated with the um, abutting project so that we both have the same exact detail on both of our plans and this easement for the water line and emergency access matches up precisely between the two projects. So I think that will all work out very well. And given that we got a letter from both fire and the police, you know, we believe that this, this length of road should be acceptable. Again, given that we've added the emergency access, uh, Charlie's committed to actually um, add sprinkler systems to the, the houses here. Um, so that, that does help them out you know, the fire department as well with the extra length of the road. Um, so we're happy to take any questions, um, unless there's anything else that Charlie or uh, Attorney Burke wants to add and be happy to address any of those questions. I will clarify, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just uh, two things. One, uh, I believe Evan uh, referenced the concept of an easement for access uh, of adjacent land. Uh, that land is the land that's toward uh, Braymore Road. Uh, and there are no plans now before the uh, uh, board or contemplated for a, a subdivision. Uh, the access would be for emergency access. Uh, it would not be for uh, roadway access. That's the plan. The second thing is that in my discussions with the, the chief today, he did mention that uh, uh, we did not ask for a waiver uh, on, on a uh, uh, a, 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 a fire, uh, what is it, Chief? 
The fire alarm box. The fire alarm box. And, yeah. and wow. if the board is so inclined, we would be more than happy to submit another request for waiver for the removal of that, the fire alarm box, which I think is consistent with most of these subdivisions. Um, Evan, if you could go back to your drawings and discuss what is happening at the former or soon potentially former turnabout at uh, Westbury Road where it terminates now. Yes, let me share my screen once again. <clears throat> so, I mean, right now you can see Westbury Road comes up and it ends in a cul-de-sac. Um, now, a cul-de-sac is usually within the right-of-way and the right-of-way follows you know, alongside the pavement. In this particular case, this Westbury Road had been planned to be extended to the end of the property line. However, it wouldn't have given a proper turnaround if this project never went forward. So there were easements placed on these two abutting properties uh, in the shape of a cul-de-sac. And when they developed Westbury Road, they actually constructed those cul-de-sacs. And the stipulation, and I believe it reads in uh, these members' deeds here, uh, these homeowners, that once um, this road gets extended and there's turnarounds in place that these would then be removed and uh, those easements could be removed and that returned to their lawn. Um, so that would be no problem to have that as a condition of approval. Um, again, it's not proposed in these plan sets because it's already proposed uh, within those deeds and can easily be done without modifying the, the cross section, without modifying any of the drainage or anything else. Um, you can see that all the utilities were installed with that in mind, with that um, already preconceived. If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, on, on that point, I have in fact read the uh, deeds that came in <clears throat> and Mr. Macy will be more than happy uh, if uh, the removal is made uh, to that uh, cul-de-sac uh, to, to uh, loan and seed uh, for the homeowner uh, so that she will have an extension of her lawn at his expense. Uh, I have not read thoroughly the easement and the language uh, and it uh, may require communication with the homeowner while we're going through that process. But in terms of uh, so that the board is uh, uh, fully aware, uh, Mr. Macy understands and will agree that when he removes that uh, cul-de-sac uh, and if it gets removed, he will uh, make a uh, an improvement to the homeowner with a grass-seeded lawn. Um, Mr. Chairman, okay, well. um, I do want to remind the board in your documents in front of you now, this uh, proposed subdivision is a, uh, a pumped sanitary sewer system and um, that this road will remain private forever and ever. And uh, the city is not taking any responsibility for the, uh, system. For the sewer system. Pam, so there will be a homeowners association with this? They will. Okay. Um, Along with um, what we were talking about with the abutting property, the neighbor, um, something about extending the driveway along with the landscaping as well, I think would be needed because of the way it's gonna cut into it. I don't know if that's something that we need to oh. discuss or not, but. Uh, because where the cul-de-sac is being taken out now, it's, it's going to leave her driveway short and i don't know if that's something that needs to be addressed yeah the driveway could be extended would correct would be extended to the, right. the asphalt right. so they'd have access yeah well again that wouldn't be a problem mr chairman uh but i again just I, uh having not fully read the language uh we may need the homeowner's assent uh, to do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what uh, my concern is, but we will do the work. Right. Okay. As long as we're at least having, we're open to having that conversation about it. Um, is there anybody else on your team that would like to speak or 
Oh, well, I, I think I think you've got us for now. Um, Mr. Macy hopes uh, that the planning board will uh, see the, uh, the value of a very high end, uh, classy subdivision. He's built over 100 homes. He does a great job. Uh, I think Mr. May knows he's done work in the city. Uh, the work that he uh, does when it ends is a good product. And that's exactly what he'll do in the west side of Brockton. Um, just a few other notes, too, that if this waiver is approved, we're not setting a precedent setting on this with the city and wondering about the letters that we have from the police and fire department that they will go on record to. We certainly have no problem with that. And I think uh, as uh, the uh, city planner knows that the each uh, waiver request is individually taking on its own merits. Um, I don't have any further questions right now. Any thoughts or questions from board members? Oh, we've seen this a few times. I, I think I'm uh, pretty good with it. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure that there are no, you know, public safety concerns. And it sounds like there are none. We have the police on board, right? We have the police chief on board. Uh, we have the fire chief on board. And so if there are, you know, no public safety concerns that should be brought to our attention, then much like James, I'm good with it. Mr. Chair, if you'd like to open the public hearing. Yes, I would. Let's open it up. Anybody opposed or in favor? We would love to hear you. I have a question from a uh, Joanne Zine from Cypress Drive, which is to the south of this project. She would like to know that if the emergency exit is being discussed, is it going to be a paved gated way? And as you saw in your, uh, from the presentation, it is a gravel way. Um, I believe there is some vegetation, but um, I will ask if uh, Evan or Mr. Burke could uh, discuss uh, gating. Sure, Rob, I, I can address that. So um, the only pavement I was showing on the plan was just an apron up by the road, just so um, any gravel might not wash into the, the street, but we can have a gate right there at the entrance and we have a detail here uh, that shows it's a, a dense graded crushed stone. Um, so again, it's not paved. It's not something that somebody might accidentally drive down um, if they come down into the, the subdivision and say they want to get over to Cyprus and take a shortcut, something like that. Um, it's, it's truly an emergency access way. Um, I did not show a detail for a gate, but there will be a gate um, at the entrance and uh, be working with Charlie on picking a, a gate that looks nice. I imagine he might even put a couple bushes and things there, but um, that would be gated off. The keys would go to the fire department, uh, whatever kind of um, key system that they would want to have. We could accommodate that. So, Okay, thank you. Thank um, you. I have Lou who would like to ask a question and I'm going to allow Lou to talk. And would Lou, would you uh, unmute yourself and identify yourself, please? Hi, I'm uh, Hopeton McGregor, uh, resident at uh, 25 Westbury Road. And um, I would just like to talk about uh, the construction as, as, as the project's gonna happen. It's gonna happen over you know some months and possibly years. And there'll be a lot of uh, heavy equipment coming through. And um, the area that we live in, the beginning of Chilton Road and that area, the roads are already in rough shape, uh, have potholes, dips. And over time, I believe that um, the conditions could get worse. So I was just wondering if there is any plans to either pave the road prior to the start of construction or doing something afterwards to um, improve the conditions of Chilton Road. Yeah, if I uh, may address this question there, Mr. Chairman, um, I'll bring up, so this construction for this property is actually gonna be a little unique because we already have um, 
this project went in and there was a, a flat kind of construction yard style zone down here to the east um, and we can turn this this way so we get north and south correct um, so obviously any construction vehicle that comes onto this property is going to have to come down Westbury Road there's no getting around that um, the first thing that we're going to be doing is you know, constructing our construction access. We have an erosion control plan with a track pad and all that um, typical uh, thing to protect to make sure that we don't track dirt and anything. And we'll have a um, sweeping program in place for that. Um, it's also great that we already have kind of an area down here. So the construction workers can actually come in and, and park down in this area as much as they can without having to do a lot of parking up here on the road. Uh, so that that's another benefit there and then as far as let's see um, the actual condition of the road I, I used Taunton's website here because they have a aerial photograph from uh, the spring of 2021 here and it appears to me that Westbury Road Kelly Lane this is after the final course of pavement was laid down was done all the way up to um, Westbury Road almost all the way to Chilton and then Chilton comes in uh, to Pleasant Street now I believe Chilton Road is actually a public city street all the way down to um, about here so you know it's um, Wes, uh, uh, Ian you, you've changed screens again oh I'm sorry I'm used to being able to share my whole uh, screen not just the window well, yeah okay so now maybe you guys can see this i apologize so you can see westbury road and kelly lane was recently paved all the way up to about here where the city's control of the the city streets begin um it appears that this road which i don't know the status of this was also paved uh, i'm assuming that might be private road as well um if the city did want to repave this and do any work on it i would recommend that it be done after any construction is done on the road um but it's not our proposal to, to work on Chilton Road or Pleasant Street or do any work out there. Um, you know, if we had cause any damage to any roads or anything like that and within our area, it would certainly be replaced and repaired. But, um, you know, they're, they're looking to be a good neighbor. You know, they're going to be there, like you said, for a little ways, hopefully not years. It should, it's not that big of a road. It should just take a couple months to put everything together. And then once the road's in, you'll only see, you know, construction of, of single family homes. So once all the heavy dirt and everything is all done with it, it should uh, quiet down for a little while. Lou, does that answer your questions or any other questions? Oh, well, I mean, I, I still believe that uh, the, the traffic still coming in from Pleasant, Pleasant Street onto Chilton Road over time is just going to make the road conditions worse than it already is so i mean that's that's one one of my main concerns right there is just um the conditions of the road throughout the process because it's already pretty pretty bad um i don't rob anything oh. that we should be addressing on that or pam regarding that Mr. May, the, the portion of the road that Lou is talking about, is that a public way or is that private? It is a private, it is a public way that was built before our subdivision um, standards went in. I'm willing to bet it was not built to two city standards and would not hold up to that. Um, uh, but because it's a public way, I don't know how... Um, we would treat that that situation. Pam, who's been here longer, might have an idea. Is it a question for DPW at some point or no? Oh, that's right. Uh, they could certainly um, get in touch with the ward counselor. The new ward counselor in November? The new ward counselor in November and, and ask that this be placed on a list to be repaved. It probably needs to be rebuilt. It probably does, but the section that runs down to the 
it is pretty much a cow path. And it's the other section that's, that runs through that atta attaches to West Barry. So one side just goes to the end and the other side. Yeah, I measured on the aerial photo, the section that goes through to Westbury is at least 30 feet wide. So that's that's a pretty good road. It is it is a unique setup where one road kind of diverges into two zones. But again, that was started, must have been in the 40s or 50s or somewhere around there. It's a long parkway, yes. Yeah. Any other so, questions? So Lou, we don't um, have a good answer for you. Okay. All right. I um, believe that's all I have at this time. Thanks. Um, I have another person who would like to speak. Um, I am going to uh, allow you to, to talk. And could you... Uh, yes. Reach? Um, sure. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Could you uh, introduce yourself, please? Yes. Sure. My name is Mrs. Francois, and I... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my fault. Oh, she's back. Fault. I'm mute now. Mrs. Francois, you... Okay, can you hear me now? Can you? Yes, yes. okay, great. So um, again, my name is Mrs. Francois and I do live on Kelly Lane. Um, so I've been here probably a little over a year. I'm a new resident to Brockton. And um, I actually share the same concern as um, the, the caller that just called before. Um, so, you know, my, I do have a concern about the construction um, vehicles coming in and out and how that will impact those of us who are already in that subdivision on, on Kelly Lane and in Westbury Lane. And, and also, you know, uh, Pam, you mentioned that we, if we wanted to petition the city to fix that road on Chilton uh, Road, that we would need to um, reach out to the city councilor. I, I, I guess my request is, you know, for this new new con contractor that is going to be already accessing and coming through, is there in a, a way that that you can build that into the proposal for this construction? Because if you're going to try to attract buyers for this new subdivision, and these are you know th these homes are pretty substantial and they're they're pretty costly, and we're paying pretty high taxes. Is there a way? I mean, you're and so you're going to need to attract buyers to come in. And I know one of the, you know, one of my observations when I bought, purchased my home, I, I just assumed that that road was going to be fixed at the end of construction and it never was. And I believe that you're going to have concerns uh, from folks who are going to be looking to purchase those new homes if they're going to, if that road, that Chilton Road is going to be their only access in. So I, I would, I would love if there's a way that that, that could be uh, incorporated into um, the plans um, and if not, what do we need to do to make that happen? Um, and then my other question is, when is this construction going to start? Because that's, you know, that's going to mean for some of us, you know, making sure that we're careful coming in and out. I, I have, you know, lived in another uh, under construction in another subdivision and it and it took a couple of years and it is very inconvenient. You know, it's you, you got to be careful with your tires coming in and out and you know, the, 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 the dust. And, and so can you give us an idea of how long this is going to take? Um, and also my first request, which is, is there any way that you can, you know, you got to beautify that entrance, you, you know, to be able to attract the type of buyers that you're looking for. Thank, thank you for allowing me to talk. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll, I'll address the obvious 800-pound uh, gorilla. We, we, we can't do off-site mitigation uh, under this normal 15-lot uh, subdivision uh, and, and uh, deal with a public road. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's not uh, a realm of possibility in the situation. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, that there was a condition that existed, and, and we just went through the development of Westbury, uh, and uh, uh, it seems like there wasn't any substantial change from what was basically the existing condition, all of which seems to suggest that they are uh, in, in, in the right spot to go ahead and petition the city to try to make improvements for what is not an exceedingly long stretch of roadway, uh, which may well be within the city's budget in order to improve the benefit of the rest of the community. Uh, but Evan, uh, 
I heard you say something about the roadway construction would be roughly about two months. Yeah, the roadway construction, I'd say be less than six months. I don't want to rush Charlie here. I don't know. Um, there is some you know, earthwork to do here, but it's not. This length of road should be something that can be accomplished in one, what you'd call a construction season. So not having to you know go from one winter through another winter type of event. Um, I know a lot of other times, you know, we had a subdivision coming off of a main road. It's a little bit different than when you have a subdivision extending off of an existing neighborhood. Um, and, you know, your concerns are correct. You have a neighborhood there with people like, you know, walking your dog, there's kids at play. So we want to make sure that the construction um, workers are aware of that. So um, a lot of times, you know, uh, projects that I'm involved in, we put up a sign for construction vehicles. Please go slow. Um, we can you know, certainly set something up like that um, to make sure that when you know a busy construction worker is you know late to the site and he's coming into the project, he sees the sign. Wait a minute, I'm I'm back in the neighborhood. Time to slow down, and he comes onto the site. And again, we, it's all about being a good neighbor. Uh, they're going to be there for a little while. It's not going to, you know, it won't be one week, but it's not going to be, well, you know, it'll be a few months. So um, if I know Charlie, he's going to want to make sure that um, he, he doesn't hear a lot of complaints about speeding vehicles and a lot of dirt in the roads. So uh, they'll do their best to make sure that's taken care of. And if you want us to put up some signs in the neighborhood, we can certainly do that. What is the committee of the channel? What, what I want? The committee of the channel. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public for or opposed? Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone else with their hands up. Okay. Hand up. Excuse me. So this one's very detailed. Um, Again, I'm going to ask for Pam's help on, you know, for, for a motion on this. Um, there's a lot of details on this one and ask for the a motion from the members. So you would need to vote to either approve or disapprove the subdivision. Um, my notes are out of sync. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, and if you were vote, if you were to vote to approve, there's a list of suggested special conditions that you were given, and there is a list of standard conditions that go into every subdivision. And that would, those are just common, you know, conditions. There's also one of those is that there's an HOA for the lights, there's an HOA for the road until the city of Brockton were to accept it. Or the HOA can remain if that's how they so choose. Right. I mean, but at this point in time, the, the city has no plans to accept the road. It's gonna be an HOA and a private road. It has to be an HOA and a private road, minimally five years. That's usually the standard, tends to be a lot longer in Brockton, but after five years of completion, he can certainly petitioned the city council. Um, but because of the sewer condition, that is not gonna happen. Well, the pumping, the sewer will never be public. Okay. So there is a condition that the, um, that the force main, and service connections not fall within the street layouts, except for the tie-ins. So if the city were to accept it at the time, they're not accepting your piping. Is that in the special conditions, Pam? It is. So has the developer received a, is they aware of the, standard, the special conditions? They have not. No, nope. nope. they just went to you guys. Take a look at them. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to uh, make a motion to approve this sub definitive subdivision um, <clears throat> with a statement that this waiver is not president setting. The standard conditions need to be met as long as these special conditions. The applicant agrees to the items in the beta group letter dated August 11, 2021 through the letter dated 8-30-21 from the W Engineering. Hannah has agreed that the items are to be verified by beta group as addressed prior to signature of the plan by the board. The cost of review is at the applicant's, applicant's expense. The letter dated 6-16-21 from Police Chief uh, Gomes is to be, be part of the approval. And we would ask that you add in the letter from Deputy Chief Williams. Yep, I was getting there next. Uh, also, the approval will include the letter from Chief Williams. The applicant has agreed that each home will include a residential file sprinkler system. The final plan submitted for signature by the board, as well as the approval letter, shall include the temporary roadway turnaround on properties at 22 and 25 Westbury Road is to be removed and the area loaned and seeded. Notation that the existing commercial garage on proposed lots 12 and 13 are to be demolished prior to the issuance of a building permit for either lot. There should be no clearing within 25 feet of property lines to homes along Westbury Road, Kelly Lane on lots one through four, Lodi Lane. None of the force mains or service connections should fall within the street layouts except at the area required for tie-in to existing sewer. The city and the DPW minimum standards require that all water mains within the street layout be no less than eight inch ductile iron. All hydrants must be rocked standard connected to the main via at gated six inch ductile iron connection. Also, service connection to be minimum one inch copper. Utility and access easements between Hamilia Estates and Cypress Woods subdivision, subdivision must be aligned and the soils on their respective easements sufficiently compacted to accommodate potential emergency vehicles. Approximate location of roof runoffs infiltrate systems should be shown on the plan. Find elevation to locations of roof infiltration systems System, sorry, will be prepared at the building permit plot plan phase of the project. Permanent markers are to be placed at all angle points, points of curvature and or tangency, including the area on Westbury Road, which extends from Kelly Lane Southerly. The applicant is to provide a copy of the final signed SWPPP. Swip. Swip. I thought that was Swip. The city of Brockton and the DPW bears no responsibility for the care, maintenance, repair, or replacement of the prior sewer system, including but not limited to force mains, pumps, chambers, electrical connection, service connections, etc. Request waivers. Well, that you have to vote before you can do waivers. Okay. Have to take All a right. vote that, and you've made a motion to. I'll vote. second the motion. Okay, so we're going to do a roll call vote. And do, when I do the roll call vote, do I add in a waiver request now? No, that's taken up after you vote. Okay, all right. So roll call vote, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonsalves? Yes. Jane Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? Yes. Okay. Now you need to vote on the waiver or dead end street and then there is a second waiver for right so we're looking at uh, waiver request section 5b5 which requires dead end streets to be no longer than 700 feet unless the opinion of the board a greater length is necessitated do we do these individually or um these you should probably do individually okay um, well, based on the discussions we have, uh, we do a roll call. We don't have to do a motion, right? Just a roll call vote. No, it's a motion. It's a motion. Make so a, I need a motion a, on this. Make a motion to accept wa waiver one. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonsalves. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Uh, second waiver request. Um, 
which requires sidewalks to be eight feet wide, constructed of cement concrete. It is requested that the sidewalk be five feet of bitmunis asphalt concrete and two and a half feet of grass and a half foot of granite curbing. The prior subdivision extension of Westbury was granted a waiver from concrete sidewalks and bitmunis bit sidewalks were installed as this will be an extension of the existing roadway. We feel the waiver to allow for the bitmunis sidewalks is acceptable. Uh, we need a motion. I make a motion to accept waiver two. Second. Take a roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. And Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Um, okay. How will you be securing your subdivision? Covenant? Excuse me. Uh, Evan raised his hand. He's got a question. I just had a question on the waiver lists. Um, we were. We want to have the most minimum amount of waivers, but now that we're hearing from um, the fire chief is asking us about um, the fire alarm boxes. Um, so in the subdivision rules and regulations, it says that you have to have a firebox every 500 feet um, and to be placed the number and placement to be at the discretion of the fire chief. Um, I don't know if we want to have a waiver that just says, um, just removes the 500 foot requirement and just says at the discretion of the fire chief. Uh, if, if he wants us to put in pull boxes, we'll put them in. If um, he thinks they're not necessary, we won't, we won't put them in. Mr. Chairman, I would be uh, comfortable with the waiver for putting the boxes in. Okay. Um, make a motion to accept the waiver at the recommendation of the fire chief. I'll second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Thank you. I think that completes it. Uh, oh wait, no, PM had questions about surety. Surety. Yep. Speak. <laughs> I know we yeah. haven't discussed Our that. Our covenant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to give us that amount of cash. So. Well, there's going to have to be some kind of a surety bond, correct? They're going to. They're either going to put them on the covenant or they're going to give us the cash. So my suggestion is you put them on the covenant for now. Excellent. Build anything to utilities and road is up to base coat and. Um, at the time that you're looking to start releasing lots, they can take that under advisement. And then when you get to a certain point, they will, you can change your method to cash. It works. Okay. Are we good? Now can I say yes? yes. Oh, Rob, <laughs> yes, please. Congratulations. Yeah. It's a long road to get here, but I think that all the safety... literally, literally a long road. Hunt <laughs> 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 intended. Uh, I thank the thank the planning board very much for its consideration. It was a lot of work, uh, but I think it's going to be a great addition to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let us move. All right. Uh, thank you all. Uh, um, who, okay. Seven, Evan. seven, definitive yep. subdivision plan. Property map 11, Route 56, plot 25, Rockland Drive, map 16, Route 188, part of the plot 97, Pleasant Street, lots, number seven, well, 17 lots, applicant Chilton Realty Trust, and representative is Jacobs Driscoll Engineering. And, okay, uh, I have moved Mike Peralt and I moved Ed Jacobs. And okay. are we keeping Scott Faria in here for some? I reason? don't know why he's here. <laughs> he wants to take notes. Okay. I can't send him back though. I don't have that ability. Right. Poor guy. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's there. <laughs> so while the representatives are here, we have uh, Jacobs Driscoll and Mike Peralt. And uh, Attorney Burke. And thank you oh, very much. Okay. Oh, Attorney Burke, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm hanging on, <laughs> All Mr. Right. Hassan, Mr. Hey, Chairman. Uh, th uh, this, you this, have the floor. 
this particular subdivision is even more mature than the one you just approved. Uh, I had the benefit of representing uh, Mr. Carney uh, and an appearance before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we wound up securing a variance. So you'll notice that the uh, particular uh, frontages on this are, are less than the, uh, the, the standard uh, within the zoning ordinance of the city of Brockton. Uh, Ed Jacobs is gonna make uh, a, a presentation, but essentially uh, this has been vetted uh, numerous times with beta uh, and we believe that it is ready for approval. Uh, it uh, shares the uh, emergency access concept. Uh, Ed and Evan worked uh, uh, hand in hand in coming up with uh, something that uh, uh, made sense. Uh, we would ask that after you, uh, after you listen to Ed and the, his presentation concerning uh, our response to a few of the beta comments uh, that the uh, board uh, consider approving this subdivision uh, as uh, uh, this evening. Go ahead, Ed. You're-, you're I you're, 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 Yeah, he's good. There I am. Good evening. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Um, we're here again with Cypress Woods. Um, could I get permission to share the screen? Oh, uh, you should have permission, but Mr. Chairman, you were going to make a statement. Um, at this point, I don't think I, I don't need to on this one. If you want me, I, I can still continue with that. I'll make the statement um, regarding um, Jacobs Driscoll, um, one of your employees, Greg Driscoll, his wife and I work together at Keller Williams Real Estate, but I have no financial interest in this project and I still feel capable of making a clear decision on this project tonight. Thank you, sir. And the applicant has no objection. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. So do I have permission, Rob? You should, you sir. All right. So. I'm on two different screens. Is that why? Hold on. Um, Hold on. I can bring it over here, I think. Whoop. All right. This is going to be difficult. I am definitely challenged here. Um, Rob, do you have it on yours? I do have it on mine. Hang on just a second. I think I have the most, oops, up to date. Let me I thought I was being clever and going with two screens. Um, but I outsmarted myself. We want the one from November. I mean, uh, that's dated September 7th, Rob. They just recently sent a plan. So right. that may or may not be in your uh, because there are probably six renditions at this point. Yeah, we've got a ton of them. Well, there's been three, there's been three. This month. Um, no, two this month, I think, right? September 7th. and August. <laughs> yeah, we've had September 7th and September 20th. Um, let me see what year this is or what date. September 20th is in the Google file. It's also in the um, um, this one's public drive. This one's marked the 22nd. That's the one we just, that's the latest version right there. Can I, can I do that one then? Sure. All right. Uh, bippity boppity boo. There we go. Can you go to page three, Rob? So this basically shows our subdivision coming off of the end of Cypress Drive. And if you go look over to the right, you can see that um, we have Amelia Estates sketched in there and you'll see the, um, that little dashed line that's coming out of there. That's the, where we're gonna hook up, oh, the, all right, gonna hook up the easement for access and water. I wanna go here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's so, Amelia Estates. Yeah, the is easement right. So we've we've looked at this subdivision a couple of times in front of the board. I mean, as as 
Attorney Burke uh, mentioned, we've gotten a variance for frontage from the zoning board. Uh, we have 17 lots uh, and our variance of frontage is down to 127 and a half feet on the straightaways and 107 feet on the cul-de-sacs, on the cul-de-sac for the frontage at the building setback line. All the lots, 30,000 square feet or over, uh, they're all nicely shaped and um, they all have the building square, they meet the building square requirement. Um, and so we've dropped the waiver for sidewalk on one side. We have the, the only waivers we're asking for is obviously the waiver frontage to 127 and a half on the straightaway and 107 on the um, cul-de-sac and the dead end length, which we've discussed before, it's um, a little over 1300 feet. We're adding on to a, uh, to existing Cypress. We're adding on an extra 900 feet. Um, as you can see, Cypress comes down from Rockland and dead ends now. Um, and then the only other waiver we're asking for is the waiver from um, four feet of cover over one grouping of drainage structures, two catch basins and a drain manhole that are right down next to where the existing Cypress stops. And the reason we can't meet that requirement is they're going directly into the detention pond to the east. And we have to, by law, keep two feet of um, cover from the bottom of the detention basin to the groundwater. So we've done a test pit there and we know what the groundwater is. So that dictates where the bottom of the drainage pond elevation is. And then we can only run the pipe back at minimum slope until we get to those catch basins. And when we do that, we only have two feet of cover. Otherwise, people coming down Cypress Drive would drive right into a two foot wall when they met our subdivision, if we had the four feet of cover. So there's no way that we can get around that basically. Um, two feet of cover is fine uh, over um, cast iron pipes. So um, we should be fine with that. And that's the only other waiver we're asking for is just that little section um, right when you come into the come into the new subdivision, there's no way we can meet the cover the four foot cover requirement. We've met all of um, Beta's uh, requirements, uh, all the uh, changes that they required. We have made. Um, there's just one small, um, I guess, item that we keep going back and forth with them on, and that would be the discharge on a certain storm from the uh, detention pond. And that's why I have Mike Peralt here to discuss that if anybody has any questions about that. And Mike designed the whole system and did all the calculations. As so we'd be happy to entertain any questions at this time. Before Mike uh, uh, jumps in and gives an explanation, just for clarification, I thought uh, I heard it, but I just want to make sure we, we we have a waiver on the books for the length of the roadway. Correct. Yes, right. Yep, sheet uh, two, I think. Uh, no, the cover sheet as our waiver requests. Yes, all right. Bottom left of the cover sheet. Did you update that waiver request? Yes. You're no longer looking for sidewalks. Correct. We have sidewalks on both sides, Pam. On the, both sides, okay. On the last on plan. On the yeah. new, on the latest plan? On the last two. <laughs> Actually, it was on the plan for the seventh as well. Oh. What page is that? So that right there, it's right on the cover sheet, Rob, right where you have yeah, a, that's where the request is, but where the what page is the sidewalk to be on? Oh, that yeah. would be on uh six, I believe. And uh, if go you to could seven. Just let one. us know ahead of time by email that you're withdrawing requests because I don't look at the cover sheet, so right. no, but but Pam, on when we when we gave you the um. When we submit it on the seventh, we submit a new waiver list. It should be in the packet. No, so it, should have, it should have dropped that one. You know, yeah, I'll be honest. I do see sidewalks on both sides. They, yes. um, there's been so much stuff coming in. All I was doing was moving it. <laughs> yeah, no, it it's definitely in that package on the okay. seventh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so we we went with a five foot bituminous sidewalk, both sides, two and a half foot 
grass strip. Concrete sidewalk? Bituminous, pavement. Bituminous concrete is pavement. Blacktop. Blacktop, yeah. It's, but Cypress is not blacktopped. Cypress is concrete sidewalks. Existing Cypress is concrete sidewalks. Oh, okay. So your, your um, regulation is for concrete, concrete sidewalks. Concrete, yeah, concrete sidewalks. Concrete sidewalks. I'm sorry. Concrete <laughs> sidewalks. Yep, I misspoke. Five foot concrete sidewalks on both sides, two and a half foot grass strip, vertical granite curving. And right where you have that centered there, Rob, you can see catch basin one, catch basin two, and drain manhole three. Just those two pipes from CB2 to DMH3 and CB1 to DMH3, those won't have the four feet of cover. Every, every other uh, pipe in the subdivision will. And as you can see, we're meeting the old uh, Cypress. So that's dictating where those catch basins, the elevations of those catch basins have to be. Excuse me, uh, and Pam, I just want to make a note here then too on some of the notes we have here. Uh, number two, addendum B is no longer an issue because they're stating on their plans, they have the sidewalks right. and the existing, okay, so we don't need to worry about that when it comes to further down the road here. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions from the board members or is there any other discussion from the team? Attorney Burke? No, I think we're good. We're ready to answer any questions if they come up. Okay. Um, I don't have any particular questions at this time, but board members? I'm, I'm good. I don't have any questions. No, Mr. Chair, thank you. Tony? No, sir. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. So is there anybody in favor or opposed? We'd love to hear them. And um, Joan Zine has a, a question, sir. And it's regarding the current cul-de-sac um, and discussion regarding an island for traffic control. Where does this proposal come into play? And... Um, they have a last house. Do you have, could, oh, I've got to share. I'm sorry. Hang on. So is this regarding the existing cul-de-sac? Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Right. So we have no plans to alter or disturb that existing cul-de-sac. There is a cul-de-sac right here. Right. Yeah. If you go to sheet seven again, it might show it, Rob. Right at the bottom, you can see the curve, the curve pavement running down through the word construction. Yeah. But we have no, we have no um, plans to alter that. Um, if you look at the plans for Cypress Drive, it shows Cypress Drive just says we have it drawn and it's bounded just as we have it drawn. That pavement that's going out into um, that, uh, that property to the east, it looks like it's on their property to me. It's, it's off of um, the public road. There's no easement as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm trying to open up a um, aerial of the area. Oops, sorry. Too many buttons. Mm 
That is interesting, sir. That the pavement goes off the property, off the public way, right? Yeah. Um, let me share this. Hang on just a second. I am all thumbs at the moment. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. So it's not an official cul-de-sac. No, it's it not. Look out that way. Right. Um, I would assume that the property owner down here may want to reclaim that property. Mm -hmm. But um, without the deed um, condition that the other properties had on the north side of this, that the developer would terminate the cul-de-sac, I think that is at the developers or at the property owners' um, um, request. But the property owner's uh, discretion. Discretion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I have another question and answer. Um, so uh, Zine wants to know how they proceed with making this request. Is the new cul-de-sac going to remain a true cul-de-sac? Um, the, the new cul-de-sac at the very end of um, Cypress Way will be a full cul-de-sac, full right-of-way. Um, but I think the question was, um, can, can the city or, or the Zane uh, build a island in the cul-de-sac with the the issue is, is that the cul-de-sac is not a real cul-de-sac, so it should go away. Um, therefore, you don't have enough right-of-way to build an island in the center of that um, right-of-way. Right. Yeah, and that would, you know, that's a pub, that's a public way now too, Cyprus. Correct. Um, if there are other um, people who want to provide testimony or ask questions, please again, uh, use the raise your hand uh, icon at the bottom of the page. Do you have another question from uh, Zane? So there's no way to mitigate traffic into the new subdivision. I think the sheer fact that it is a, there's one way in and one way out sort of mitigates the traffic. Um, I know the city is not, um, uh, the DBW has never been in, in favor of traffic tables or speed bumps. So, um, I, I do not know, but that's something that, that we can discuss, uh, with you, with DPW. Wish I had a better answer for you. Sorry. Any other questions from the public? Anybody would like to speak? I do not see any, sir. Okay. So we need a motion from the members with the standard and special conditions. A motion to approve with the standard and special conditions stated. Second. We'll do a roll call vote. Um, again, Pam, on this, do, do we need to read through all of these as I go through them? Do you want me to read through them? The conditions are absolutely the same as in the lot one, in the last one. Okay. Um, same special Both. conditions? Same special conditions. Um, yep, almost e e exact. And then we'll have to do a vote on two waiver requests, correct? Yes. Okay. So then we're going to do a roll call vote. 
Um, Larry. Who Hattana. seconded that? Sam did. Samantha. I did. Thank you. Set. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Um, waiver request section five B five, which requires dead end streets to be no longer than seven hundred feet unless, in the opinion of the board, a greater length is necessitated. Uh, need a motion. Make a motion to accept waiver one. Members, second. We, okay, we got a second. We roll call vote, Pam. Yes. Okay, so a roll call vote. Section one, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. <laughs> yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. The other waiver was it was number three, but it's the other one is not necessary at this point. So addendum B, typical cross section, minimum cover from four feet to two feet for I'm not sure what CB stands for, but CB number one and number catch two. Catch basin. Catch basin. Okay. Catch basin and DMH number three only. We request that if you approve this waiver, it is the condition that the DPW engineering division review and approve this motion. Um, just for an explanation, I went to engineering with this request because this is kind of out of our expertise okay. entirely. And um, the initial reaction was no, because you just need to provide that much cover. But then after discussing it with them, they were willing to take another look at it. But so, so the condition is the I could do for a motion. All right. I'll just say we've done this in the past. As long as we use cast iron pipe, which we have spec out for that, it's it's not a problem. And I did call down to DPW and left two messages down there, and I never heard back. So I wish I had better news. But okay. so make this a motion to accept waiver um, as described in number three. Second. Do a roll call vote. Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. Thank you. Right. Oh, we're gonna talk about surety on this too, Pam. We Mr. do. Chairman, if I may, if yes. I may, could we just ask for the waiver for the alarm box as well from um, Chief Williams while we're doing waivers? I'll make a motion to add the waiver as suggested by Chief Williams. Second. And roll call vote, Larry Hassan, yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Samantha Ambrose. Yes. And then Pam, I need to talk about surety or how we're going to handle that. Don't Same way. It. Same way as the last one. Absolutely. Right. So go with Covenant. Yep. Yep. Okay. I believe that's it for now. Anybody? Are we done? That was it. It's been an interesting run. It Thank you very has. much. Been a, like they uh, said I before, a long the, uh, road. Thank you, everybody, for your patience members. and hard work. I appreciate all the work that everybody's done. Is everybody on this panel, too? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you all stop up and sign those plans sometime in the next. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting is now complete. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.